coming up later in the show. But now, football culture. This week takes us to Richmond, a classic Tasmanian town built and largely populated by convicts. Richmond have joined the Old Scholars competition this year and are taking on University, a club renowned with having the least aggressive nickname in football history, the Rainbows. Football culture, the convicts versus the Rainbows. Lying just half an hour out of Hobart is Richmond, a classic historic convict town. It was first explored in 1803 and a population quickly grew because of the lush soil which was ideal for growing European wheat. Convicts were sent to the area to build houses, their own jail, and behind me, the classic bridge. Built in 1823, it's the oldest standing stone bridge in all of Australia. People come from all around the world to see the classic Richmond Bridge and to feed the fat Richmond ducks. So blow your winds, hi ho, a rover and I will go. I'll stay no more on England's shore, so let the music play. I'll catch the morning train and cross the rage in Maine. I'm taking a trip on a government ship 10,000 miles away. On the main street of Richmond we came across Keith, who runs his own horse-drawn coach business. Keith was kind enough to take us for a ride around the town, and he informed us that it's Richmond's soil, which is ideal for wheat farming, that originally attracted people to the area. We settled outside the old historic church for a chat about the days gone by. And tell me again about the 16 pubs that used to be in Richmond. The government actually created an incentive for people to build pubs in those days. Yes, that's correct. Um being a boom town, people were rushing here to make money, building mills. I really think it would have been the centre of commerce and trade for a while in Australia. And so accommodation was impossible. So the governor finally said, if you want to build a pub, you can have free convict labour. So the everyone roof, built a pub. That's right. Dead right. And 16 pubs, you'd never get to the last one on a Saturday night, would you? <laughs> I guess not in these days. There's just the Richmond Arms Hotel. But uh, Richmond's got a great future, Keith. Certainly has, certainly has. I mean, the rich soil, the water, unlimited sunlight for growing things, and uh, well, they've proved it with what they are growing here already, and its proximity to Hobart and the airport. Keith drove me down the road to the Richmond Arms Hotel, which is owned by football club president Damien Waller. After having a steak which was absolutely beyond compare, I had a chat with Damien about the history and future of footy in Richmond. They've got a very good culture, the old scholars, where it's a very good brand of football, but also it's a very social competition where the teams intermingle after the game. So it's uh, looking forward to uh, many years in the old scholars. Yes, we are. Yeah. It's definitely where we see ourselves in the next five to ten years at least. Looking at some of the uh, history of the club, I believe the the late uh, Ted Grice played an enormous amount of games for Richmond. Yes, he played 630-odd uh, games, and his brother actually played 600 games, so that's, as you can work out, that's about 30 years of playing football each. It's an amazing feat. Those guys must have almost played till they were 50. Oh, well, you'd think so. That's playing amazing, isn't it? Games. Don't get much of that these days. No, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> certainly not. And the Richmond Blues, who you've changed to this year after uh, 80 years as the Lions and before that 40 years as the Roosters. The Roosters. What, what led to that change of name to the Blues this year? Well, the major reason being that there was already a Lions in the Old Scholars competition being Hutchins. So, you know, it, being a choice of either changing our name or not going into the comp, it was a pretty easy choice to make and we just decided that our jumpers have always been blue so we'd be known as the Richmond Blues. In the early evening, a solid crowd was already building up at the Richmond ground and as the cars continued to roll in, they took up their traditional places all the way around the ground. The Richmond boys were preparing for the big game and I took the chance to catch up with coach Steve Ryan and ask him how playing under lights was adding something to the old scholars. I believe it's a novelty and something different that we perhaps brought to the old scholars that um, helps bring crowds along. People that go to the football this Saturday afternoon can come along here and here every night and uh, enjoy another night game. It's good. And how are you finding the culture of the old scholars, the other clubs uh, that you play against? Excellent. Yeah, it's good. It's, um, it's what everyone said it was going to be, but um, to experience it firsthand, it's good. And uh, Richmond <coughs> has fitted into that culture very well. Um, we're a down-to-earth football club with uh, fairly good facilities and that's fitted in with a, with a nice ground as well that, that is very similar to Coimbra and North Hobart, etc. So uh, I think our uh, facilities are up to standard and the culture behind the club fits in well as well. Also. They shine like diamonds bright and silvery sounds at home 
Happy Happy Earth 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 Phil Carmen in a white boat. As the players quickly adjusted to nighttime footy, I took the chance to catch up with uni legends Bill Farmer and Chris Burgess. One of the uh, one of the big events on the social calendar for uni is the Gate Money Barrel Day, which is the close of season function, which generally involves a copious amount of free beer and uh, and always results in a nude Olympics of some description taking place on the uni oval. How does the nude Olympics work? Uh, well, by definition, it's nude, and uh, there is some running involved, and I can assure you that by the time you've had uh, 13 or 14 beers, there's bits going everywhere that probably wouldn't normally, and uh, you do get a look at some of the beer again, unfortunately. That was handy just to cut out all the swearing you were carrying on with just then, Bill, but uh, uh, tell us also, uh, if, do you know anything of the Hutchins Sandy Bay proposed merger? Uh, not really, there was a lot of talk about it earlier in the year uh, and I spoke to the Hutchins committee about it because we were trying to keep these things pretty open and I think it was just an idea floated uh, basically that, uh, that maybe a possibility if Hutchins grew maybe a little bit more. Uh, certainly I don't think they would, they would like to do it at the moment but uh, down the track who knows, there's lots of change in footy going on and anything can really happen so uh, we'll just wait and see. Do you know any more than you're telling us Bill? <laughs> No, no. You're sure? Stage, yes. No. As the president of the association, you don't know anymore. Well, we have got seven teams this year, and I don't think any are pulling out at this moment. All right. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> and do the Hutchins have a colloquial name? Uh, yes, uh, they are called the Beans, or, or Jelly Beans. That's uh, one of their uh, names at the moment. You've got a colloquial name, Bill. Do you want to spit it out? <laughs> we could, uh, <laughs> I've got a couple, I think. We could call yours as well, I suppose. Say that uh, you're called Choco. Is that a uh, fair way of saying it? Be careful where you go with this, Bill. <laughs> It's time for my favourite part of football life, and that's the taste test. And as you'd expect, with Richmond being such a great tourism town, there's a fantastic array of food available in the canteen. Bev, tell us some of the things you've got on offer here tonight. We have chow min. Chow min, that looks fantastic. And pumpkin soup. Well, look at that bubbling away, that looks fantastic as well. What's and in there? Savaloys. Well, they're the reddest saveloys I've ever seen, Bev. Where do you get those from? Trendy Meats at Brighton. From Trendy Meats in Brighton. They look great. And we also have hamburgers and chicken nuggets and hot chips and pies and pasties. Wow, the whole range. Now, with the sav, before we move on, do you believe it's OK if the sav bursts in cooking? Yes, I think it is. You think it's OK? Yes. The customers don't mind that? No, they like it. They like a burst sav here. That's, yes. that's good. Tell us about the chow min. Now, the ladies make some of this at home, is that right? Yes, yes, they make it at home and bring it along. All right, and what are the main ingredients in chow min? Mince, cabbage, curry, onions, Fantastic. a few beans. A few beans. Mm. Looks really healthy and it looks really nice for a cool night. I might try a bit of the chow min if I might. Okay. Fantastic. Prepared earlier is chow min at the Richmond Canteen. Here we go. Mmm. Oh, that's nice. Nice bit of curry in there. I'll give that 7.8 out of 10. After my chow mein, I headed to the outer to catch up with some of the Richmond locals. I suggested with so many cars in the outer, the headlights could be used to help light the game. Ah, oh, no, no, I don't think so. I think it'd be very hard to see out there because you'd be looking into the lights all the time. So, no, it's quite good. You're finding it's more social with the other clubs playing in the old scholars? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, they, they stay and have a beer and, and, then, and then we go back to their rooms as well, so it's quite good, yeah. Is beer an important part of footy? I think so, yes. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> Thanks, Gibbo. No worries, thank you. <laughs> Claude, you're watching the footy from your van. You've got a bird's eye view. Nice spot there. Oh, magnolia spot. <laughs> magnolia <laughs> spot. This is where we park all the time. Yep, and you're, yeah. why do you like to watch the footy from your van? Ah, well, it's nice and close to the boundary line and uh, we can see everything that's going on around the, around the area. And, and yeah. you, when uh, Richmond score a goal, you go for the horn, do you? Oh, Mother does, yes. Yeah, mother does, <laughs> she's yeah, in charge of that. Horn, yeah, she's a hornblower. Oh, yeah. that's great. One of the highlights of the night was the in-depth, incisive commentary from Uni President Gary McCarthy. Oh, it's another shocking bounce. Bill Loon, though, we're in round four by about round 18. The umpire will work it out in the Jew umpire, throw it up. The distance will test him here. Now he knows he can make the distance, he might have a set shot. No, the umpire's bringing it back here, didn't pay the advantage. Now Sammy might handball to Wilkinson, who's a much bigger kick. Jeez, umpire, they're going to kick three in a row and you won't give them any of them. Crikey's. He wants his five minutes of fame, he's got it. You've got to go yourself, Sammy. Fair chance this one will be a point. She's coming back. About time, that's an 18-point play, that one. 
and Yanni gets six for it. It snuck, not sure, he's a flick pass, sure. He scooped it. He might be doing Woodstyle reserves next week, this umpire. He's had a shocking effort this week. I will go. I'll stay no more on England's shore, so let the music play. As for the game itself, the first quarter was very even, but in the second quarter, Uni's runners came into their own to take the Rainbows to the half-time break with a 20-point lead. Richmond bounced back in the third quarter and had quite a lot of the play through the second half. But although Craig Wells tried hard all evening, Richmond lacked the firepower up forward and Uni's runners and strong marking in the forward line brought the Rainbows to their pot of gold by 55 points. And your commentary uh, was superlative uh, tonight, Radar. Tell me your take on the umpire. He continued to uh, insist on bouncing the ball, although he didn't have a lot of success. Uh, look, you don't have to be Einstein to look around the ground, and I can see the Jew from here. Why in the hell you would bother trying to bounce it in these conditions instead of taking a step forward and throwing it up above your head so it lands in the same spot every time? But uh, umpires are umpires, and I don't know whether our competition you can get fines. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, <laughs> why they didn't just throw it up and be done with it instead of trying to bounce it. I mean, nine times out of ten, it's going at right angles. And uh, maybe for the next night game, they might learn by their errors. Oh, he's thrown it up. The umpire has thrown the ball up. We're at the ten-minute mark of the last quarter, and the umpires learned something tonight. <laughs> oh, the inimitable radar, Gary McCarthy, University President. Big thank you to Taz Kino for their support of football culture, to Oroko Libra, to Paul Roberts and Matt Charles for the music in the show today. Davo, the rainbows. Of, can someone please write in and tell me where the rainbows come from for a start? And no Robinsons tonight. Very disappointed, Martin. And Red Planet reporting. Oh, great. Fantastic. Aren't they? After the break, footy misses. <laughs>